Hello and welcome to Void Electronics. In today's video I will attempt to fix this Zoom G9.2 TT guitar processor. All I know is that it used to work intermittently and now it doesn't power up at all. Let's see if we can find the root cause for this. Now we already have a red flag in terms of the power supply and that's because it came with a US adapter. However, I live in Europe and the owner lives in Europe as well. So this means that you cannot plug this in directly. So this is a 120 volts AC input adapter and it uses a transformer so that you can safely use it in Europe. And honestly, I don't really like this solution and I never trust such adapters, but uh, it is what it is. I just hope that this is a true transformer, not some sort of triac based thing because that would be because that would be a really nasty thing to to use at the input of such a device, I guess, because you really want a sine wave at the input of such a transformer, not some sort of weird waveform. So the power adapter is supposed to give us 15 volts AC and I checked and it is the right adapter for this processor because it also takes 15 volts AC. So let's see if you have anything at the output. So yeah, this is bang on 16 volts AC with no load. So it looks like the adapter is working. However, I don't really like this setup because um, I would like to see what happens with the output voltage with the processor connected to it. So let's see if we can find some sort of test cable for this. So in such cases I prefer to use a cable like this one. This has a DC barrel jack at one end and banana jacks at the other end. Which means that I can easily connect something to basically any sort of test equipment. And of course this one doesn't fit because it is slightly too small. I hate these connectors. So since I don't have the right connector for this, I guess it's time to take it apart and do some tests directly onto the board. So I hope this was the final screw. Let's remove the back panel. Yep, we are in. So fortunately we can visually trace the wires. So the AC power goes through the switch. And then I think it's supposed to come through these wires all the way up to this board, which is some sort of power supply and other things in here. Not sure. So let's check for voltage right here. I think we're supposed to have 15 volts in here, 15 volts AC. And we do, which means that the power supply is okay. I mean the AC adapter for it. Now let's check for some other things as well. And the first things that I see here are some linear voltage regulators, I guess. This is um, 7812, so it's supposed to regulate uh, 12 volts. And this is a 7912, so this is supposed to regulate minus 12 volts. So let's check the voltages in there. I think the output is here. Okay, this one is probably dead. No input, no output. Okay. Next one. Nothing in here. Minus 17. And minus 12. So, the negative rail is okay. However, we have no positive voltage, which explains a lot. So, nothing at the input and that's why we have nothing at the output. So I will assume that we have some sort of bridge rectifier here and probably these ones are the filter caps. So let's check for voltages around here. Here we have nothing basically and here we have negative 17. So the negative rail is okay once again and the positive rail is dead. So I will assume that the right capacitor is for the positive rail. Let's check between the legs just in case even though I think this capacitor is referenced to the chassis so it shouldn't make any sort of difference. And we can check for that with the power removed of course. Let's remove power and check for continuity between this leg and the chassis. 
and it's a dead short so of course this is reference to the chassis and the positive leg of the negative one is probably the same yes so this is your typical symmetrical power supply and only half of it works let's see why that is since one of the rails is dead let's check the diodes around here first one This one is probably okay. This one. Ha! This one is dead. So it doesn't display anything, it's an open. We have some voltage in reverse that's rising, it's probably a capacitor charging, so this one is definitely dead. Next one. This one has a negative voltage and now it has a rising voltage on it, so hard to tell in circuit, but uh, it goes up to 500 millivolts or so, so it's probably okay. Let's check it in reverse. We have a rising voltage in reverse, so this one is hard to test in circuit, but who knows, maybe it's okay. Next one. And the next one. Okay, this is probably dead. This is a dead short. Let's check it in reverse. And we have a dead short in reverse as well. So, this one is definitely dead and this one is suspect. I haven't figured out the power supply yet, but this definitely explains why we don't have the positive rail. So, to figure out the power supply, let's do some continuity checks. Let's start with the input wires. So I figured out that the red AC wire goes to ground. I'm not sure if that's on purpose or not, but let's see. Maybe this is supposed to happen. So with this in mind, let's check where the red, where the black wire goes. So the black wire goes to this diode and this diode. These are D404 and D409. These are probably the rectifier diodes, so judging by the way they are connected here, D404 looks like it's producing the positive voltage, so from cathode to the positive capacitor we should get continuity, which we do, so this is the positive diode, okay, and D409 is probably producing the negative voltage based on its orientation, so from anode to the negative lead of the negative capacitor we have continuity as well so these two are the rectifier diodes what about the next ones so we have six diodes in total here to figure out what about d406 well let's see this one we can see the trace here visually, so it goes to the output of the 7812. Okay, maybe this is some sort of protection diode, so let's see where the, um, where the cathode goes. Yeah, so the cathode goes to the input, which means that this is a reverse protection diode for the regulator. Let's move on. This is D408, D408 is close to the output of the regulator, so let's see, maybe it's connected directly to the output, and it is, the cathode goes to the output, and the anode goes to ground. So this is a reverse protection diode as well, which goes to the output. What about the next one? We have to figure out D410 as well. I bet this is some sort of reverse protection as well. Let's see. Anode goes to the input of the regulator and the cathode goes to the output of the regulator. Okay. And then we have D411 and this one goes to the 
it looks like it goes to ground and here as we noticed earlier something's not right because it looks like both legs are grounded so this is weird maybe the diode is shorted or maybe the negative supply is somehow shorted to ground but this is really weird because we had the right uh, negative voltage here so to sum things up this is what the power supply looks like nothing unusual here except for the fault so let's draw the faults as well d404 is an open so it's basically not there and then we have a short between this point and this point so something doesn't add up here because I swear we measured the right voltages here around the negative regulator and I double checked and we do. So this is indeed grounded, the input is right, it's around minus 17 volts and the output is also right, it's around minus 12. So this cannot be a short, so let's double check. So the pin out here is ground input output from right to left because the regulator is upside down. So, between ground and output, it looks like we have a dead short, but let's check the resistance as well. Okay, so it's not really a dead short, but it's like 6 ohms. Okay, so since it's not a dead short, I suppose that the regulator is driving this load anyway, so maybe it's getting really hot, but it can do it anyway. So just when I thought it didn't make any sense, I figured it out once again. So I suddenly remember that this thing uses vacuum tubes and I thought, well, what if they power the vacuum tubes from the negative rail, I'm, the heaters I mean, because if they do, that would explain a high load on the negative regulator. So this is exactly what they do. Look at this. So we have around 6 ohms here. Let's remove one of the vacuum tubes. Now we have like 12 ohms. And now we have like 2.6 kilo ohms. So yeah, the negative rail is doing just fine. It's just that it has a really low load because of the heaters. Let's put them back and move on to the positive rail. So the positive rail is not shorted or anything. Look, the output of the regulator looks like 1.6 kilo ohms or something like that. It's definitely not shorted. It has a reverse protection to ground, so yeah, we can see that in action probably. Yep. So, I'm not sure what to do here. Are we witnessing just a random failure of one diode? Is that it? Let's find out. So, before replacing the diode, it's time to do some sketchy stuff. So I decided to connect an external diode in parallel with a blown one. And I also decided to use a fuse in series just in case. So we have a 2.5 amp fuse in here. And we are also monitoring the positive rail on the multimeter. So yeah, let's see what happens. And let's just hope that it doesn't blow the fuse here. Because that would indicate some other issues on the positive rail. So place your bets now. 3, 2, 1, let's go. Yes! We have 17 volts. Let's see if the thing is on. And it is. We have some LEDs here. I'm not sure what it does because we don't have inputs and outputs to it. So yeah, it's alive once again. We have to check the positive rail anyway because this is just the input, but we have to look at the output of the regulator too. So. Let's move the probe to the output. I bet it's working, but let's check it anyways. So yeah, positive 12 volts or thereabouts, 11.8, whatever. So it looks like it's working. I will test it with an audio signal maybe, and then it's time to remove lots and lots and lots of connectors just to replace the one diode there. 
So you know what, even though everything looks okay, I would like to try it out with an instrument just to make sure that it can actually pass audio through it and that everything works. So let's see. Oh yeah, I think it's working. Looks like the owner left some nice chorus on before the diode killed itself. I'm just playing, yeah, it definitely works, it just needs a new diode. So I think the original diodes are a bit undersized and maybe that's what caused the failure, maybe they are always running hot. So I have some really beefy diodes and I will use these to replace the original one. So this is a BY329 diode, so it's definitely overkill for this application, but I think it would be an improvement to the circuit to use some higher current diodes. Also, before replacing the diodes, maybe it will be interesting to have a look at the temperatures around here. So, on the negative diode, on one of its terminals, we have, let's see. Around 52 degrees centigrade, after only a few minutes of operation which is an increase of around 30 degrees with respect to ambient. And let's have a look at the replaced positive diode. And this one runs a bit cooler. It's at around 47.3 degrees centigrade. Okay, enough talking, let's just remove the board. And the board is finally free. As you can see, it's lots of work just to remove this board. So here are the new diodes in place. This is not the prettiest job, but it will do the trick. Also, I noticed that the tabs are not isolated, even though the datasheet claims that they are. So my plan is to isolate them with some heat shrink just in case. Okay, so all the wires are back. I triple checked the polarity of the diodes and now I think it's time for a smoke test. Let's see. We have some lights, so I think everything's fine. And I know the drill, since we put everything back together, I think it's a good idea to test it with an instrument once again, go through every single button to make sure that it works. And then I will finally put back the bottom cover and that's about it. So let's see. Yep, sounds good. So the main takeaway here is that even though something like this looks intimidating at first because it has lots of boards and lots and lots of components, by having a systematic approach we basically don't care about 99% of what's in there. So you just need some basic troubleshooting skills and you need to be able to test a few things inside here, not just change components at random or change components because that's what somebody said on a forum. So if you learned something new from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in more content related to electronics and programming, please subscribe to this channel because there is more content like this on the way. That's it for now. Bye.